Well, hello there. I'm Admiral Nikolai Alexandrovich Sokolov, the new guy steering this ship we call the Soviet Navy. After years of battling it out on the high seas, Admiral Kuznetsov has passed the baton to me. He's fought hard and well, but now it's my turn to lead. And boy, do I have plans. First off, let's talk about my big gun doctrine. If there's one thing I believe in, it's that there's no such thing as a gun too big. My plan? To make our ships the most formidable on the ocean by strapping the largest cannons we can muster onto them. Picture this, a ship so armed that even the fish think twice before crossing our path. But it's not all serious business and booming cannons. I've always said, if you can't laugh at yourself, aim the cannon a bit higher. I plan to bring a bit of humor to this esteemed position. After all, a good laugh can be as powerful as a broadside from a battleship. So as we sail into this new chapter, expect some changes. We're going to have ships that pack a punch, tactics that surprise our enemies, and maybe a few laughs along the way. After all, who says you can't have a bit of fun while showing the world the might of the Soviet Navy? Let's set sail into this new adventure with a clear aim and a light heart. The seas might be rough, but with big guns and a bit of humor, there's nothing we can't face. Get ready, comrades, for a new era of naval dominance, Sokolov style. Hey guys, Stealth here, welcome to episode 33. It's been a couple of years. It is now May 1932 and the world has drastically changed. As also has our Admiral, as you might have seen in the introduction. I'm going to switch up the Navy. We're going to do a more numbers approach with cruisers with big guns. That's the plan. First though, let's have a look at what's happening in the world. The Soviet Union finds itself at odds with the French. With the Spanish, I'm not even sure why with the Spanish, nor really what. Because there's not that much left of Spain. Um, the Germans are currently, fortunately, a little busy pissing off the Austro-Hungarians, allowing me to piss off the Germans and try and take German New Guinea. As for the war with the Japanese, well, that has just kicked off. It is something that I'm not really looking forward to because most of my navy in the, uh, let's say, the Pacific slash Asian theater is busy invading this place. So I am a little stretched thin and um, it would be probably beneficial to try and stop the war or end the war with the French. Well, I'm a little busy taking French Guinea from them. Um, it's going to take another couple of months. So for the time being, that plan is off the table. Now, when it comes to the French colonies, uh, there is so much movement in Africa between all sorts of invasions and defenses that it's very difficult to keep track. I've basically stopped keeping track and I'm just trying to figure out what can I take. So I've already taken Mozambique, oh, sorry, Madagascar over there. I've taken uh, Somaliland, but that used to be Ital uh, Italian. We got Mozambique, which the Germans are now trying to push back into. I have taken Gabon, which is getting double invaded by Germany. Uh, they might very well take that by the looks of it. We have Ivory Coast getting some visitors from the British department. Good lord, that is very valuable. 11.6 billion? Might have to pay Gold Coast a visit at some point. Um, there is tons of stuff happening. And the amount of ships slash fleets around is getting absolutely bananas. So the amount of ships that I have to try and keep track of is, uh, is very difficult. As for the war with these various navies, there hasn't really been that much fighting going on. Everybody's just too busy trying to invade each other. Now, the French don't have a navy left. We do have some ships left in the Italian navy, but not that many. And thankfully, I was able to go to peace with these people and get a decent amount of money from them. Their economy is still bigger than mine, but I am catching up. Well, <laughs> I was catching up up until the point where I was at war for another couple of years. Uh, the Spanish, they are basically a non-entity at this point with a 15 billion economy. That somehow they still have the money to build two battleships, or rather to field two battleships and to build 23 more. So they still have grand plans. When it comes to the Empire of Japan, they are mostly a cruiser nation with 13 heavies and 13 lights and a whole bunch of DDs. 
their power rating is good and their army logistics is high. Thankfully, I don't believe I have any borders with them, so I shouldn't face any invasions. The Germans? Well, a bit of a paper tiger. Like, they're at war with everybody and that's cost them their entire navy. Austria-Hungary is now my ally and I'm quite happy with that because it means that I don't have to police the Pacific, any oh, sorry, the Mediterranean anymore. Uh, the US is fighting and the French and the Germans and the Italians and the Spanish. And so far, uh, I believe they have by far the largest navy at 118 ships, closely followed by the Brits, which are mostly using cruisers and DDs. They don't have that many capital ships. This day and age, that's not very surprising because there are so crazy prices for bank capital ships. It's just becoming almost unaffordable. So that's why I'm going with a couple of cruisers. Thankfully, cruiser design is getting prioritized and has already given me the experimental heavy cruiser. With this ship, I intend to do great things. Now, we do have the Mark 8 small guns coming up, but I already have the uh, Mark 4 9-incher and the big guns, and I even have the Mark 3 11s and the 12s. So let's figure out what we can build for a new heavy cruiser type, because we're going big guns. Now, we already have the Large Armored Cruiser 2. It's a fairly old design. This one is the new one, the Experimental Heavy Cruiser. Displacement for this one is more. It is 17.5 or 17.8. This one's going to max out at 14.850. Stability-wise, it wins out. Uh, resistance is 75, is 65 here. Hull form is better. It is just overall a better hull. So let's fold up all the designs and let's figure out how I'm going to build this ship. Um, ideally, I would not have too well too much displacement on these things. So let's say 10,000 tons. Okay, 11.8, fine. The reason for that is I want to keep them um, somewhat cheap, but numerous. We're going to go with just a lot of ships, if that is affordable. That is, holy mother of God, that's a huge tower. How do you, <laughs> how do you expect me to fit that on this ship? Okay, can that fit here? No. Would have been fun. Secondary tower. We get the advanced rear deck tower. Can we cram a funnel complex in here somewhere? Oh, you can put it there. Oh. Well, that's interesting. That actually gives me a lot of options with this ship. I like it. All right, let's give some defenses to her. I have the new and beautifully improved Coincidence Rangefinder 5. Lots of gun base accuracy and excellent gun aiming speed. We're going to give them sonar, we're not going to really give them radar, uh, radio, radar hasn't been invented yet. Uh, some anti-torp, let's make sure that they get a double hull, some auxiliary engine, uh, best anti-flood and reinforced bulkheads. Speed-wise, I'm thinking 30 knots. The problem is that is going to make this ship pretty expensive. And I don't like that. Um... Like, it's not battleship levels of expensive, thankfully, because that would have been fairly uh, ludicrous, but it is it is on the more expensive end. The issue is, if I don't do that, I might be getting stuck with a ship that is just not capable of catching up to things or dictating the range that I want to fight at. Now, big guns. So we're going to put 11-inch guns on a cruiser. Because I can. I probably won't have too many guns, because this hull is, well... Let's say in a chase format, it's not a great hull because you cannot put that many guns onto it. But this ought to do it. The problem is pitch. That pitch is all over the place. Let me put the funnel over there to try and put some more weight towards the center of mass of the ship. And yeah. Let's first get some barbette armor and some better reloads. Electrohydraulic turrets, TNTs, two powder. Uh, give me super heavy shells. How much pen am I getting up to? I'm looking at a reload of 53 seconds. It's quite a lot. Give me capitalistic fuses for HE. Let's see. I have armor quality 130. Let's set the game to that to make it a bit easier to figure out what I can and cannot pen. Let's, make, let's go 140 because I intend to keep these ships around for quite a while. And as such, they're going to encounter 140% armor quality at some point. One way or another, somebody's going to have that. So with this, I can pen about 6 inches of armor. That is pretty awful. 
So we're going to go bigger. Capitalistic one. Yeah, now we're getting somewhere. Um, with these shells at about 10,000 meter range, I can pin quite a lot of armor. And if that does not work, I still have HE as a secondary option. Now the price tag for these is 215 million of pop. And I think that I won't change too much more about the ship. Maybe put this slightly farther back. And I can give them torpedo launchers amidships to give them more of a punch. Torpedo launchers are 2.3 million a pop. So this adds quite a lot. As for torpedo propellant, I still only have fast. If I give them standards, their range probably isn't that good. And the AI has this sort of, yeah, nine and a half clicks. I'm not doing that. The AI have this sort of uh, precognition about where a torpedo is going to hit. So let's not. Now these turrets weigh 859 tons. So I guess I could put one over there. And still be within the limits of the ship. And doesn't make it terribly expensive. So now I have 12 11 inch guns. That's not too bad. Let's put some secondary guns on there. The 5 inch Mark IV. Oh, I was hoping I could put those on the wings. I cannot even put the 4 inches on the wings. Nor 3? What good are you? You're no good whatsoever, because I cannot put anything on there. Well, that is disappointing. I can put two inchers on top of the turrets. So yeah, let's do that. Unfortunately, that won't quite fit there. What about this other tower? It's a bit heavier. Base accuracy 17 half, base accuracy 16, aiming speed slightly better. Com range, I don't really care for... Hmm. Okay. What would happen if I were to upsize these guns to, let's say, 12... Uh, well, just shy of 12 inch. Give me a 60 second reload. That's quite a lot. Punch becomes really impressive. The whole ship is slightly too heavy at this point, though. Yeah. And the issue is, if I'm fighting cruisers and this thing does not one-shot it, it's going to be in a bit of trouble. Because it'll suffer from inability to really quickly get another shot on target. You're going to have to wait 60 seconds. How am I going to save 400 tons? Single hull bottom? It's not even enough. Um, I don't want to go lower than 30 knots. I do like these big guns. Just exactly 60 second reload, but that's with cadet level of crew, so I can still pump some more shells out of this. Um, what if I give them slightly sizable secondary guns? The issue is you can't fit them anywhere. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 0.5 inch. Uh, we're getting there, but no. Because I haven't worked over the armor yet. And this thing has shit for armor. Uh, give me a, like a 7 inch main belt. I'll fix the balance later. Give me a 2 inch fore belt. 2 inch aft. Like 2 inches of main deck would be nice. And then an inch of superstructure. Uh, 7 inches of conning tower armor. I don't know. 1 inch fore. 1 inch aft deck. Like the super oh, sorry, the, the forward belt and aft belt of the ship are barely existing because it's such a massive ship. Hmm. How much does this weigh? 718 tons? Yeah, I could go for two funnels. I spread engineering out, but that's going to make it worse. Would give me a lot better engine efficiency. With better engine efficiency, I could drag this lower and save some weight there and still get 10,000 tons. Oh, sorry, 10,000 clicks. So... That could be an interesting option. I get my armor. I do have to say wait somewhere. Uh, standard ratio. I don't really feel comfortable with a 6 inch main belt. Considering what these things might go up against. Which could be some really serious firepower. Uh, 29 knots? Yeah, that doesn't move the needle that much. Can I make them slimmer? No. The game doesn't allow me because that main tower is pretty, pretty wide. Put that to zero. Okay, somewhere else then. Somewhere else. One and a half inch four belt and half belt. This is, it's not even enough. 
Reduce the auxiliary engine. <laughs> um, we're going to have to find some way to get a better engine on this ship. Turbo electric probably doesn't have the same horsepower per ton. That makes the ship very expensive. I don't know, natural boilers? Yeah, there we go. But then range suffers again. Induced. Now we're getting somewhere. Decent engine efficiency. Pitch and roll is not too bad. Four weight offset is still a factor. 8.8. .8. Push this slightly back. Can this... Ooh. I like that. That can free turn. Okay. Uh, advanced radio direction finding. And now crank up the armor again. Like 7 inch main belt. Um, how are we doing for guns? Holy crap, that's a lot of armor on the guns. 15 inch should be sufficient. That's a lot of armor on the gun. I don't want them cooking off, naturally. But this feels like a lot. Give me a 3 inch main deck. Can we go 8 inch belt? No, 7.5. There we go. Okay. So this is uh, Sokolov's... What shall we call this thing? Um... Yeah, maybe just a Sokolov class. It's the new Admiral. He gets to name the ship after himself. Whether these things will perform, I'm pretty confident. I think they have quite a lot of potential. Especially considering that they got a lot of firepower for a heavy cruiser. And they are <laughs> only costing me 242 million. Contrast that to a Kaluga, which does have more... Um, well, it has the same number of guns. It just has more firepower with 14-inch guns. But these things cost me twice as much. And I think with two of these ships, you might be able to take down one Kaluga. So let's save that. Now, getting these things built is going to cost me a pretty penny. That's 242. I want to get at least five of them. Because uh, it's going to take them a while to build. How long does one Sokolov take? 14 months. It's not terrible. It's not terrible. Now, at this point, I have quite a lot of different ships. Um, I have some very old Vladivostok-class destroyers. Let's try and get these things sold off at some point. Look at the price tag. Isn't that cute? 12 million. As for the rest, I'm building two DDs for the export market of Mexico. I have the old Krepke class from 1923. I still have the Scout Cruisers from 1898. I have mothballed them all, but nobody seems to really be taking them. And they've been on sale for months. So I'm just going to scrap these guys, because they're, <laughs> they're not likely to find a buyer. Uh, the Sokolovs are getting built. The Yakovs are 1922s. They're pretty old as well. It's four 9-inch guns and a whole bunch of 8s. They can still perform, but they might need an upgrade. And ideally, a replacement. We have one Kuban class heavy uh, battle cruiser with the a twelve inch sorry a thirteen inchers. We got a Chesma and another Chesma nineteen twenty one. These things are old. The problem that I have is that these ships have been at sea for so long. Like same for the Synops, they have barely been at port, and as such, I just have not had any time to replace them or refit them. I just have not taken the time. Let's take the focus away from the cruisers for a minute. Um, continue building the bigger, or rather the small guns. Continue focusing on the big guns. And I'm going to keep the last priority open. I would love to get Stereoscopic 5 at some point, but not right now. It'll eventually pop up. As for finances, I'm now blur blasting through finances like crazy. Uh, my merchant navy has taken a massive hit as I'm getting just torpedoed by submarines everywhere. Which is not distinctly fun, but it's uh, the situation as we find it, so deal with it. As for what I intend to do, I intend to take this province off of the French. I intend to take a province off of the Germans. As for a war with um, Japan, I don't really know if I want to take a whole lot of territory from them, because I simply don't have the fleet here. I might be able to do some things with submarines here. I got quite a lot of them, but I'm not really sure just how useful they're going to be. What does Japan have to throw at me? One battleship and a whole bunch of cruisers, right? 
considering that they got that many cruisers, it's going to be very dangerous for all my submarines to approach, well, anywhere, really. Where are you going? Away. Okay, fine. So the focal point, I'd say, French invasions. Um, the Germans don't really have much to sink. So if there's going to be a naval clash, we're going to focus on Japan and try and get them crippled. So time for some actual naval action. The Rostov is coming under fire from two German ships as she is busy defending. Wow, these guys are accurate. Oh, ho, 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 but so is Rostov. <laughs> Oops. There goes your light cruiser. Uh, she's busy defending a convoy. Now, this was the Prince Eugen. I believe we have just eliminated from the board. Wow, that was... <laughs> that was a watch not wonder. 17,000 points of damage. <laughs> I like how this ship just went, you what? And it just eliminated something. Probably by not even targeting it. But, you know, Soviet style, you miss one target, you accidentally hit something else, and you just end up destroying it. Um, these 14-inch guns, they pack a punch, but I don't have that many of them. I have eight of them, only four of which I think are part of this battle. Now, let's have the Rostov turn a little bit, slow down to touch. Yeah, here we go. What you got there? Yeah, it's one of these... It's one of these paper cruisers. They do hurt if they actually connect their shots, but the moment that these things take a hit, they instantly disintegrate because they have just no armor. And we shall soon introduce them or reintroduce them with that fact. They do, however, have torpedoes. And as such, at 8.5 km range are pretty threatening. Now, Rostov is very much deserving of even bigger guns. Well, as per the doctrine of the new Admiral. Uh, the challenge is actually finding guns that... Ow. That suit her. Because the 14-inch guns are already quite sizable for this particular hull. And I might not be able to field anything bigger than this. I also find that this thing gets penned way, way, way too soon. Like we got hit in the four belts and it got penned. I get that. The four belts only three inches, but come on. Oh, you've switched targets, have you? No, you haven't? So, you're trying to hit this thing, but your shells are landing there? And now you have switched targets. Can you just not? Can you just focus on one target and eliminate it? Before this thing ends up just murdering you? What's your chance to pen me? Way too good. It's not the first time that the Rostov has taken a lot of damage. Mostly flooding. Look at that. Maximum bulkheads. Yes. Reinforced bulkheads. Yes. Anti-flood 3. Yes. So what's your problem, Rostov? I mean, your problem right now is going to be damage and stability, that's sure. Gun recoil, minus 27. Engine vibrations, minus 9. Yeah, we got all sorts of issues. Let's angle the ship a bit more, and at range, we should have the firepower advantage. There's Prince Eugen. Those 10-inch guns. That is pretty threatening. Armor? <laughs> aft belt? What do you mean, aft belt? This thing has no armor on the belt. It has no armor on the superstructure. Switch to high explosive. A couple of HE hits should educate the Germans. And there's the Graf Spee with those 9-inch guns. Yeah. Bow and Stern are just so weak on these ships. Or they just have some really good pen. But I would find it an absolute disgrace if Rostov would get destroyed by two heavy cruisers. Unacceptable. We're flooding again? And again? Secondary tower destroyed? Can we please land a hit? It's making you look bad. You've lost 10% of your crew. And these guys are veterans, supposedly. 
What's your firing range? 15 kilometers. And those 10 inches are probably better than that. 20 kilometers. Good lord. Now, it's not so much the structural integrity of this ship that I worry about. It's the flooding. And the ship seems to be largely incapable of dealing with it. What do these guys have left? 62 HEs. A whole lot of AP. Okay, let them waste their... I was going to say let them waste their AP shells on the Rostov for a while. As she's very, very angled. But even that is not sufficient. Come on. More pen. We can see down to 38. Ooh, this ship, though. Without a secondary tower, I feel that my accuracy has been a bit... A bit hampered. Damage and stability to 50%. I can't exactly outtrade these guys. Crew-wise, we're okay. 11.6. But the fact that a couple of paper-thin cruisers are dealing this much damage to my battle cruiser is a bit of a disgrace. 319 million. Damn. That's more expensive than the Rostov? Wow. What sort of advanced engineering did you put on this ship? Stereoscopic 5? Okay. So they have an extremely good rangefinder. This ship? Probably still sporting a 3. Yeah. That's the problem. The Germans are extremely capable of finding range. And using it to great effect. Oh wow, we got one hit. Oh, and now we're listing too much? Okay. I guess it's time to try and pull this ship out of the fight, because... Uh, she's becoming somewhat incapable of continuing the fight, because of all that water inside the hull. Is our convoy away, at least? No. Our convoy is only nine clicks out. This is going to get very uncomfortable. Another bit of flooding. Oh, boy. Prince Eugen has no high explosive shells left, but plenty of armor piercing. The other one is definitely still adding up the damage. What's taken most of the toll on this ship? It's very even. Four and a half to 4,100. 300 shells. I'm trying to outweigh these guys. Just let their accuracy drop. But look at that. Even at this range, they get a 25% chance to hit. That is uh, very dangerous. That level of accuracy? Yikes. It's only something the Rostov can dream of. Ceasefire. You're not going to hit anything anyway. 300 shells. Let's see if I can outweigh this guy for a bit longer. Well, unfortunately, Rostov did get taken down by these two heavy cruisers. Pretty surprising, really, because I thought, well, one battle cruiser, two heavy cruisers, we got these guys. But the German technology, and especially those rangefinders, proved to be way too much for Rostov. That is quite a lot of victory points that the Germans did get. I did get some trouble, or some uh, points for my trouble taking now that destroyer with that first accidental shot. Or rather, that accidental hit. Wrong place, wrong time for the destroyer. And the thing is no more. But more importantly, that battle cruiser was playing a pretty important part escorting the convoy. So I guess not only did the battle cruiser go down, the convoy did too. At this point though, I've kind of stopped really caring about the amount of transports that I have because I'm at war all the time and ships are becoming so incredibly expensive that I simply don't have the funds to try and keep everything in one piece. I cannot escort all these transports. I cannot power present in every single area because I'm operating in far too many places. As for the fight against the Germans, uh, yeah, they definitely have a big, big, big lead on me now. I can only hope that we can level that. But that's going to have to happen in a future episode. Thank you for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments on the new Admiral. 
and I look forward to seeing how his new ships are going to perform. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon for more.